I do want to make a note about this definition that I wrote here for tangent line. It's a line that basically touches a graph at one specific point, right? So it touches a graph. If we want to be a little bit, it can cross at more than one point, but we want to be able to say it just touches the point, the graph at this point instead of it doesn't cross. Depending on the function, some functions may curve later and stuff like that. And so the tangent line really may touch at more than one point. Um, so I'm going to say that a tangent line is a line that uh, that touches a graph at a single instant. Or I'm going to say at one point in an area of interest. I'm running out of space. Okay. And so <clears throat> I do want to make note um, of this piece here that says over shorter and shorter intervals around A. Um, if you've taken calculus before, this process that we're going over is actually uh, related to what we call limits in math. And anytime we want to figure out what, if some value or some function or some relationship pr approaches a value, in order for us to prove that, we can do go through the process of calculating a limit or finding the limit of a function um, as it approaches a certain value. And that's basically what we're do, going to do here. It's basically getting closer and closer and closer to a certain value. What are our y values doing? What is our function doing? And in the case of these um, instantaneous rate of, rates of change, our intervals are the intervals on our x-axis between the a and b's. As long as these intervals get shorter and shorter and shorter, um, we're going to get closer and closer and closer to the instantaneous rate of change, which is the slope of our tangent line which is the line that touches the graph at this specific point that we're interested in finding the instantaneous rate of change at, okay? Just to get go through some more terminology, um, I want to come up with these definitions here, and it's not necessarily a strict mathematical definition, but some terminology we want to introduce, um, and that is the derivative of f at a. This is denoted f with the single quotation mark, of a, kind of like your function notation. So we read this as f prime of a. This is the derivative at a point. And when the derivative is at a point, at a specific point, it is instantaneous because it is at that instant instance, right? So that is defined to be the instantaneous rate of change of f at a. It is the slope of the graph of the function at a, and it's also the slope of the tangent line to the curve that represents that function at a, okay? So all of these things are interchangeable, right? When I see a derivative at a point, and I want to stress this. This is at a point, the derivative at a point. If I have f prime of, let's say, 3, that's the derivative at a point. This is going to be different from, let's say, f prime and my input value is t. These two are totally different things. This is at a point, and this is the derivative function, all right, which is a total, I mean, it's very related, but this is more general compared to here. This is instantaneous. This is a function, so it's over a bunch of values, right? What we're focusing on on this section is the derivative at a point, and that's the instantaneous rate of change. Okay, let's look at an example where we actually use um, the instantaneous rate of change, right? Um, right now, we're going to, we're, all we're doing is estimating, right? So this example says, let f of x equals x squared, right? We're going to estimate, estimate, estimate f prime of 1. By the time we get out of this class, we'll be able to exactly find this value here. But we're building the concept behind the processes we use to build the, um, um, concept. And so what I'm going to do here is whenever I see this, I should start thinking instantaneous rate of change. All right. When I see that, I should also think smaller average rate of change over smaller and smaller intervals around A. A is your point or your value in your domain, and in this case, our A is 1. And so if I look at this function here, my function that I have graphed here, well, it's not graphed. The function that I have here is f of x equals x squared. I'm going to draw a quick sketch of that.
it looks something like this. So our goal is to find f prime of 1, right? So when x equals 1, basically what we're trying to find is our slope of our tangent line of this function. It's hard to draw, sorry. I want to know the slope of this line right here, right? That's instantaneous rate of change, slope of the tangent line. The thing that's going to help me do that is to pick some points around 1. Now, I'm going to go in one direction, but I can pick a point that's all the way out here. Let's say this is 1, this is 2, 3, right? I'm going to do 1, 2. I got to figure out how far up my function goes. And if I calculate the average rate of change between x equals 1 and x equals 2, that's going to give me an estimate of f prime of 1. But 1 to 2, that's one whole unit, right? That's a pretty big number, right? I want to pick a smaller number between or a number that's closer to 1 so that my interval can be small. In this example, I've given you some intervals that you could use, right? In part A, we're going to use the interval 0 0.1. In part B, we're going to use the interval 0 0.01. And in part C, 0 0.001, okay? So um, I'm going to pick a value like 1.1. Right? I want to calculate my average rate of change because that gets me close, right? One, if 1 is here, 1.1 1 .1 is here, this line right here will be my estimate of my derivative, right? So f prime of 1 will be approximately f, I'm going to do my average rate of change from x equals 1 to x equals, well, if I go from 1 to 1 plus this amount, that'll be 1.1. My formula for average rate of change is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So my b would be 1.1. My a would be 1. So I have f of 1 all over 1.1 minus 1. For me to figure this out, I plug in 1.1 into my function. My function is here, x squared. So that's going to give me a 1.1 squared minus a 1 squared all over, well, that's 0.1, right? And if you get your calculator or you do your calculations in your hand, you're going to see that this is 2.1. So I'm going to say that my instantaneous rate of change of my function f is approximately 2.1. This is true when I use an interval of 0.1. Now I'm going to go to part b, and I'm going to use a different interval, 0.01. And so instead of being this far, I'm using a smaller interval, and I'm getting even closer. And so when I draw my, it's going to be very, you know, hard to see the differences here. But my, there will be my tangent line, and my average rate of change is over a smaller interval. It gets me to my instantaneous rate of change, which is going to be the slope of this tangent line. And so f prime of 1 in this case will be approximately... Um, I'm going to use my average rate of change from x equals 1 to x equals, well, I'm going to have an interval of width 0 0.01, so that's 1.01. .01. So I'll do f of 1.01 .01 minus f of 1 all over 1.01 .01 minus 1. Plug that into my function, the same function, right? We're, we're still doing it. We're just using a smaller interval this time. The interval's width is 0 0.01. I plug in my 1.01 .01 into my function. That means I square it. And so I'll get that my derivative at x equals 1 is approximately 2.01. Okay? So when I did it first, I got 2.1. Now I use a smaller interval, meaning I'm getting closer and closer to my actual value of x, so I'm getting closer to being an instant. I get a derivative that equals 2.01. I'm going to do it one more time, right? So I'm going to estimate f prime of 1. And it actually does equal, well, it is an approximation even at this step. But I'm going to use my average rate of change from x equals 1 to x equals 1.001, right? So I'm going to plug in 1.001 .001 into my function. I'm going to subtract that from when I plug in 1 into my function. And if you do that calculation, you're going to see that f prime of 1 is going to be approximately 2.001. Okay? So notice when my interval was the biggest, 
I had I was the furthest away from two. But at each step, when I make my interval smaller and smaller and smaller, I get closer and closer to two, right? And so it says, which answer is closer to the true value of F prime of one? I'm going to say answer C. Um, F prime of one was approximately 2.001. And I know it's that that's the case because the interval was smallest. Okay. Now I will let you know that I've 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 done my average rate of change from let's say x equals one to x equal point zero zero one. Okay, I went above one. It is not incorrect, although people don't normally do it, to say I'm going to go from well I know I'm going to use x equals one, but I'm going to go point zero zero one less than that. And so some people may say that they're going to calculate the average rate of change from point nine 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 to x equals 1. That's still a width of 0 0.001, right? And so I can still do that, okay? And it just means I'm going to come from the left-hand side to calculate my derivative or my instantaneous rate of change. What I've done in examples A, B, and C here are I've used right-hand derivatives, right? So we've been doing right-hand derivatives. All right, if you do left-hand derivatives, your intervals are going to come from the left, right? So from 0.999 to 1, right? Um, you could also do some calculations right quick. You can also kind of do the middle, right, where x equals 1 is the middle, and so let's say I want to use an interval of 0 0.001, right? Well, 0 0.0001, wait, I only want three zeros, divided by two is 0 0.0005. And so what we could do is if I want an interval, um, but I don't want to use one as an endpoint, because here one is an endpoint, here is one is an endpoint, I kind of want one to be in the middle, so I want to use an x on this side of one and x on that side of one. Well, I can add... If I want the width of the interval to still be 0 0.01, I can divide it by 2, and I'll add it to 1. So I add that 0 0.0005, and then I'll subtract 0 0.0005, and I'll see that I'm going to get 0.9995 here and 1.0005 there. Okay, and then that way I can calculate my average rate of change um, and it'll still be over a smaller interval and it'll be an approximation for my derivative for f prime of 1. So I can do like f um, of 1.0005 minus f of 0.9995 all over 1.0005 minus 0.9995. And then that's going to give me the approximation for f prime of 1 as well. Okay, so there are some options. You can do right-hand uh, derivatives. You can do left-hand. All right, and these are kind of centered. All right, if you only want to just always stick to right-hand unless a problem says use a left-hand derivative, then you can always just remember the right-hand. All right, and this concludes this video.